Hello, this is Haku Debian, and today we are going to r slash D&D Horror Stories. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. As you might be able to see here, I selected a great many stories. Including two that were remarked as not safe for work. They weren't that bad, so I decided to include them. Let's begin with story number one. Should I be worried about this game? On a burner because I want to be as discreet as possible since this campaign is homebrew and recognizable to my to any members. This whole campaign started a couple of months ago, somewhere around on the late December of last year, or maybe early September, I can't quite remember. It was all going pretty well, the only thing that really bothered me was the NPC. I know, that should have been the first red flag, who basically the story revolved around for the entire first part of the session. That's bad. I didn't dislike him as a character completely, but I would have appreciated if not all of our consequences affected his life in some way that we had to quickly fix. But after the boss fight to end this part of the session, I think it all collectively went rather well. We all took a break to give a DM some um, time to write a new story for us, new adventures and like. This is for when, at least for me, the problems began. So this part of the session is revolving more around my character, his backstory. My char character found out something that was incredibly important to them and was less triggering, something to drive them to do more in this upcoming story. I didn't have a problem with this. It was when the DM NPC it gave me as what I could describe an illusion of choice. One really dumb answer which could, would get rid of the information I just got as a character, or something that could affect the NPC later down on this, in this story. This was when I felt like they had already burdened my whole storyline. I wasn't too entirely pleased with this first session and I was being honest. I have theories of what they are going to do to my character, and quite frankly, I'm a little afraid. A couple of other things that I've been noticing is railroading players when it comes to their actions. Shutting down ideas without a second thought. I'm really not confrontational while our DM is. I've been vocal to one player about my concerns, but either way, I'm still scared to say anything in a way that will come across to the DM and upset them. But the more I sit here and marinate it on it, the more I'm dreading going to this campaign and playing it. What should I do? Again, I'm really sorry for the obscurity. I'm just really antsy about this whole thing and I don't really know where else to go. Whew. <sighs> Now we're moving on to story number two. Do you think OP should be worried about their game? I think it's sending some red flags to me. The DM took my backstory and changed it to fit his, to fit his world. The group consists of a gunslinger, a bard, a cleric, a sorcerer, and a barbarian, me. The DM was running a relatively low stakes campaign where we were basically so sorts. It came to a point when we had to go to my hometown. <sighs> had to go to my hometown to see my mother and find some answers to the quest we were on. <laughs> my backstory was that I was a tavern brawler who had a lot of bad influence, so to help my family pay for the tavern and to Find better friends, I went out adventuring. I was the champion five years running of my family's small tavern brawl tournament. Keyword here, small. We head back to my hometown and met with my mother, who he described as thick. 
joking that she was built like a Pixar mom. I found this funny as it's a game and she isn't real. <laughs> it was a good time and apparently as DM described it, a tavern was doing amazing. I was so happy to hear that. And she explained that the town's tournament was about to take place. I was confused. What town tournament? We entered and got ready for the tournament. He told us that there was a werewolf that had been the champions for the last two years. I reminded DM that I had only been gone for a year, but decided to let it slide. I asked who this was. Uh, this is I was adamant about knowing everything from this bra as a friend. And I Everyone from this bra as a friend or enemy. He said I had no idea. I talked with the DM and explained that he must have misread my backstory. To which he said he had it. But that a larger tournament seemed more fun and seemed more fitting so he changed it. I told him I didn't like him changing my backstory and he said it's for the good of the group. And that mailed better with this world so I should get back over it. Later as we went into the tournament he revealed that another group had entered late. The group was revealed to be the gunslinger's old friends turned enemies. They had rarely murdered his husband and were back for round two. I asked the player about it in character and he was very vague. Not usual. Guys, the player after the game revealed that his husband wasn't dead. So the game decided to change things of about this character's bit of the story as well. When I asked the rest of the party separately if anything had changed with the characters, they all said yes. I either major or minor, everyone had at least one thing changed. One player told us that he was basing his campaign off his favorite show and that we were all characters from it. So we had to fit the mold he wanted. Well, that's annoying. I think that's like one of the most annoying things a DM can do is change your characters around. No, you don't get to play your character. You play the characters that I decide. Or you have to fit in this mold or that fits with this game show that I like. Or whatever. Like, no, it's supposed to be a collaborative writing experience. Or storytelling experience. Player asked out his IRL girlfriend in the game and got rejected. We just played a game of DD where there were five players. The two that mean anything here are the Asma, our paladin, and the human wizard. One thing to keep in mind is that the boyfriend who made the girlfriend's character for her because she was fairly new to DD. We suspect that he made her character what his perfect girlfriend would look like. So basically, a Greek goddess warrior who's seven feet tall with rippling muscles. Over the course of the campaign, the wizard Erd has wanted to seduce his IRL girlfriend in the game for a while. He has said his character fell in love with her when she saved his life after he yelled at the beat big bad evil guy thinking he had the power to stop them, while in reality he was seconds away from dying. While getting great to fight a large beast, the wizard approached the paladin and said that he never had anyone who, who really loved him and thought, and he thought that with everything going on, he didn't want to waste time. He had written a speech which he read to her for five actual real-life minutes. At the end of it, no wait, she sat in silence and she listened to him explain why she should date him and why she is the one for him. At the end of it, she told him he didn't see him that way and walked away. It was incredibly awkward for everyone involved. We all sat around the table exchanging looks and trying not to laugh. Even the DM tried to intervene by having several characters come and bite him in an attempt to cut short this awful seduction attempt. The wizard eventually caught on, brushed it off, and we moved forward. Oh, that is too funny. And that just hurts in a weird way. You can tell that I didn't that I don't really vet the ones that aren't marked NSFW. God damn. 
DM punished me for ex or the existence of another PC. So all of this started my regular Saturday game, which consists of mostly six people. The relevant characters for the story will be me, the DM, Bionet, Ice Niners A and B, a PC named Mzar, and a player I'll refer to as Absent. <sighs> Please. Make it a list. Do some formatting. My goodness. This will be the second campaign we play as a group that took place after I finished is the game in my first campaign. As I was designing a system and to play the next campaign and I asked if, my, if any player I want to DM a captain in the meantime. DM agreed and wanted our characters. We mostly had normal characters. Vice Ender er, I played a cleric. Vice Ender A played a cleric. Vice Ender B a bard. At least use capital letters when you're doing any letter names. Come on. Absent the fire, and I I played a wizard. The main issue was the player's eye, who wanted to play a monster like PC, modeled after Rex I from League of Legends. Oh God, you you play with League of Legends? I wonder you can't and write a an easily readable story. God damn, this is hard. This is hard on my eyes. Because my DM did not know. I had to incorporate that into the world. He asked me if I was comfortable. If I was comfortable to incorporate that into my backstory, as it would fit with a certain aspect of my backstory. TLDR, I tried to invent a new spell in a dire situation and accidentally changed souls with my familiar. Deem approved that it was my best character yet. I said, okay, since I thought it would be a nice thing to do. The first few sessions also were not a huge issue, as they were a quite basic goblin encounter and not too much social stuff. The issue started to appear around session 3 though. We visited a town in order to find a quest to earn some money, but it became quite obvious early on that Zara would not be allowed into the city. This led to me as a PC having to split from the party for two and a half sessions, mostly just sitting there. Which was not great, especially since I called out my game master after session 1 and told him I want to do something as well and not just sit there and wait for 6 hours not doing anything. Oh wow, this is actually giving me a headache. However, as I did not listen for or session 2, all 6 hours, I realized some other issues. Was I wasn't unable to do anything, I paid attention to how the other PCs were treated and saw that Absent, who was, who had, has not been there since session 1, suddenly was one level ahead of the entire party. We asked about that as a group after the session and DM just told us not to worry and that we will catch up with him. This, however, did not happen. Over the course of the next 7 months, this character and a DM PC stayed at one level ahead of us. Zara did eventually get so fed up with the situation that he left the table, leaving me with a remote PC. I basically made half my roleplay consist of fighting monster deck through whenever we got stronger. Zara just existing also created ongoing costs for my PC alone, as there was much collateral damage, which my PC was held accountable for. That led to the other PCs being able to afford magical items, which were also given to them. Well, I had to solely rely on my class skills and strategy. We as players also confronted the DM about that multiple times. Which led to them including my backstory into the overall story, which was the only time that happened into, in the four campaigns I played in. Which is a sad fact, which I'll say for another story though. Which only led to my character having more issues in the overall plot. The only reason why I say it in that campaign is that I know the GM personally and see him on an, an, on an everyday basis. This overall behavior also led to us as a party deciding to stop the campaign and let, let them choose me as a GM for our next game. After the game, we asked the GM why he treated me that way and why he blatantly singled me out with loot and Zara as well. He has that for once he did not want to make me look like his favorite player, which he said I was as because of roleplay and treated me worse than everyone else because as of that. 
And that was because he said he, that he did not want Tsar as a character in his campaign, which he could have just denied and needed an excuse to get Tsar out of the campaign. Tsar was present for all sessions but two, in which I also was not present in character because Tsar could not easily enter the city. Tsar also was present for four months after the player of Tsar quit. The campaign ended four months after the player of Tsar quit. Wow, well, you could have said that in one sentence. Crazy. Overall, I sadly had to remember this campaign as one I could only play because I liked the role play dynamic of my character and the character as a vice sender or A and B. The group still plays with me, but we have two new players, one being a good friend of mine and the other being my girlfriend, and the DM also still plays at my table. I would say he is not a better player than he is DM, sadly. As most of our problems are root from his in-party behavior and main character syndrome, or his beef with vice sender A's character. I hope you could enjoy this little read, and I have to apologize if I made any sort of mistakes, as I am not a native, as I am not a native English speaker. Have a nice day. It's not even the English. I don't, I don't know if there were any spelling mistakes. It was just that it was hard to read. The text is so tiny. The format is so compact. There. I didn't even know Red had that font, honestly. <sighs> All right. Mansplaining Jerk who ruined D&D &D for my friend. Well, I do have to do say I do understand where you're coming from, and I do feel like you were pretty much ex you were pretty much punished because another player character existed. Anyway, let's get to this story. Recently, one of my really good friends started up an original campaign with a bunch of newbies, including my best friend Talia. She had never played before, but me, my husband, and her husband have been playing for a long time. We also had another new guy, Brad, who rolled up a chaotic gnome warlock. Of course. The game was super fun and one of the best campaigns I'd ever played. Why the hell is the text so small again? The new players were a bit hazy on the rules, but learned quickly and got really into the role playing. It was a very fun, relaxed campaign with lots of great storytelling and character development. The DM kind of, uh, went kind of easy on the new players and met the rules a little bit to help them have fun, which all the season players were fine with. That is until Paul joined. Paul had just moved back to our town after being away for five years. He is a childhood friend of my husband, but we always hate each other. He was super misogynistic and had rage issues. Yeah, I don't know why you would still hang around with someone like that. But he recently had been through some therapy and everyone said that he turned over a new leaf. Sure. We were at a barbecue together and he was very polite to me and apologized for how he treated me in the past. As he should. We hugged and I had a few drinks, so I offered her up a token of reconsolation by inviting him to our D&D game. Well, that was a mistake. Later that evening, my husband told me I shouldn't have done that, but it was sadly already too late. I think your husband can see through his, his, his nonsense. Paul joined our campaign and immediately started criticizing our DM and Ruth's loyal lawyered every call. He pulled up a bar a pirate he rolled up a pirate barbarian whose weakness was greed, who was racist against elves. Okay, that's annoying. Talia was an elf, and my character was a half elf. So he proceeded to be an asshole to us. He also hated ad shenanigans. They're a bit over the top, but Brad is very funny and most people don't didn't care. And said so he was playing his alignment wrong, among other things. 
Everything went south when Paul and my husband got into a huge argument about loot. Talia and Brad made excuses to leave the campaign, and the best campaign I had ever played was over. <sighs> Why would you invite Paul again? He, he literally started problems. So our DM started up the pre-written Ravenloft campaign, since I guess he was exhausted from the last one. It was me, my husband, Talia, Paul, and another season's player. So now Talia was the only one who was inexperienced. Paul took it upon himself to criticize and lecture Talia on every single thing that she did, down to the way she rolled dice. You see, you didn't flick your wrist like you're supposed to. You rolled your dice wrong. You just dropped it. Like, okay, dude, chill out. She was a druid, and he crammed off all of her spells and told her which ones she should use, when she should use them, and how she should level her character. You gotta use Fort Thorn Whip on, on that goblin over there. It's a weak to o o vines. Oh my goodness, I actually am not happy with that. <sighs> Talia, naturally, did not like this. She wanted to play her character, her way, in a way that made sense for her background. Everyone else thought he was being a jerk, and but we were too scared to kick him out. And I didn't and, and want to start anything because we were like finally getting along outside the game. As it, oh my god, who cares? He's being a toxic asshole. Oh yeah, he totally turned over a new leaf. But he's still being a misogynistic, toxic asshole. Just kick him out. As the campaign progressed, it became clear that Paula had read ahead and knew everything that was going to happen. So he's metagaming now, and I'm guessing that he's trying to make everyone do the side stuff that they don't want to do, and he's going to ruin the enjoyment for everyone else. He steered everyone in the group on pointless side quests that no one would think to do if they hadn't had any previous knowledge about them, and gods do things that made no sense. A lot of people in the group resisted at first, but became resigned to his leadership after they they got tired of arguing with Paul every session. Just kick him out! That is actually bugging me. At this point, nobody likes this guy. Why is he still around? He also continued to lecture and critique Talia on everything she's, he's, he did. At one point, the DM asked for clarification on a spell. Talia started reading her spell, but as she was reading it, Paul all pulled out his binder and started reading the exact same spell over her in his loud, obnoxious his voice. Everyone at the table was appalled, but still no one said anything because we were all afraid of making Paul angry. Who cares at this point? He is breaking so many social contracts. You are allowed to make him angry. Nobody gives a crap about Paul anymore. Screw Paul! <sighs> Finally, thankfully, the campaign ended and Paul started a new campaign which we weren't invited to. Apparently, our group was Adventure Time and he won Game of Thrones. Yeah, I guess he won on the, at incest, whatever. We were finally free of Paul, but Talia was scared from the experience and never wanted to play D&D again. <sighs> Don't let one bad player or DM ruin, your I ruin the entire uh, hobby for you. I mean, my first D&D game was awful. Especially for my younger brother, who is now obsessed with D&D. I heard from some other friends that Paul was kicked out of his other campaigns for being an asshole. Which is what should have happened in this one, but nobody freaking stood up for themselves. Or for Talia. 
which was unsurprising. Then moved to cross country and I never had to deal with him again. Now I've become more er, selective of who I play with. At least you grew up. It seems that even if people can change on the outside, the old old asshole can still reemerge under the guise of role playing. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Thornweb, you. It's, it's a spell where our, our, our thorns are and come out of the ground and, and hit an enemy for 2d6 damage. Thorn whip! It's a spell where a thorn comes out of the ground and hits an enemy for 2d6 damage. Paul, nobody asks you. Freaking hate it. Guess it wouldn't be a horror story if people actually kicked out problem players as soon as they started their pro um, um, shenanigans. Anyway. Game was going great until it wasn't. So I have plenty of stories, but they're all years ago, so I've been hesitant to talk about them because I care about getting details right. But this story was literally last night. It's also not as big of a horror story as many other stories, as is entirely in game in a single fight. In the session. Firstly, this takes place on a Westmart server. I've heard so many e horror stories take place on, on these servers. I'm guessing these are like D D E Discord servers or whatever. I don't know what Westmart really means, but I'm guessing that these are like online servers where people play D D E and Discord, or then there's like multiple. Or DMs and party is going on. Out of way, terrifying stuff there. Let's move on. So I'm playing a one shot with a DM I've never played with before, and with other players I've never played with before. Secondly, I did draw a game that was above the level of my character. This game was tagged as having combat, skill challenges, and role play. That's a lot to have in one an, uh, in a one five hour in one five hour one shot. Why'd you say numbers? So I figured all that together in a one shot, the combat wouldn't be too heavy, which I was correct on. To be quite honest, combat wasn't hard, and I didn't really care if my character died. But I wasn't trying to rush my death either. I was just happy to play the game, and if I did, I'd I had plenty of other characters in mind that I'm dying to play too. The role play was almost entirely pushed by the players, which is fine. But almost every instance of RP or flair or, or for artist was the players chilling and interacting with meaningless NPCs. It was a scripted fight, and we had to describe what we were doing to help at one point following a trail, but other than that, nothing required in roleplay. That's lame. <sighs> the skill challenges were great. Everyone got to contribute, and this and the roleplay my character really shined in. So, for the combat, I made it through the first fight without getting hit, and I definitely contributed, but there's not much else there. The second combat was no threat at all either. A little damage, but not even bloodied. I got to use some of the ball bearings I dragged along too. The third was the problem, and honestly, it wasn't even that bad either. For a projected level of the game, it was balanced. The party had no issue dispatching it. However, I was on the ground the entire boss fight. And here we get to the problem of the session. My party opened that a chest at the end of a treasure map. A ghost spawned next to me, which also think about it. The paladin had sense for undead at right before a reopened the chest, but I didn't ping for some reason. Anyways, the ghost spawned next to me because we got to the chest. We got the chest opened, we heard a riddle. I answered quickly and incorrectly, so the ghost spawned next to me. 
Fair, it tried to hit me, but I used a shield spell. That's chill, we're all for initiative. I get to go a second, right after the boss. The boss, some, some sort of scream or banshee well or something that... And I have all my HP down immediately. I'm unconscious, but that, that's fine, there's three healers in the group and I'm just happy to be here. <sighs> well, the healers gets me up. I'm raring to go. The boss gets hit with the massive damage from two of the other party members. But he said I woke up and the demon says, Well, it's an intelligent creature. So it attacks me while I'm awake and prone. Fine, still makes sense at this point. It then teleports away to get some range on the ones hitting it like a truck. Great, I'll have a chance to set up this time. Healers, heal. Oh, the healer heals me again, and I wake up. The boss gets a turn, or it gets its turn, and teleports back to me. It's an intelligent creature, so it stops me back down into the dirt. Now I'm not here for it. I get healed again, and the boss gets another turn of attacking me while I'm down. I don't remember ever the situation, and at this point, because I checked out. Knowing I wasn't going to get to fight. <sighs> I mean, honestly, that's kind of unfair, and you are definitely getting targeted here. Unfairly targeted because you aren't even doing anything yet. And the it's an intelligent creature excuse is getting on my nerves already. An intelligent creature. Would not try to attack someone who did not owe fucking damage to it. Absolutely ridiculous. I remember the situation at this point because I checked out knowing I was going to get to fight. Hmm. <sighs> The DM does this thing where you describe a good or bad memory when you pass or fail a death save, which is great, but on the third round of death saves, I just hand waved it, saying I couldn't think of anything. The party healed me again and the boss and killed the boss that round. So I woke up and we ended up time skipping through the end of the mission because we were pretty close to going over time. I was playing smart the whole time. I was conserving spells in the fights and then feel like they were going to be the last fights. I was avoiding and surviving the best I could. Then the last fight, I got targeted into the ground. <sighs> After the... He game the DM asked for feedback from the players, and I asked him if the boss had some sort of compulsion to attack me, since I'm the one who evoked it. No, it's just an intelligent creature, and you're the only one you could hit. Even though it definitely got hits on nearly every other party member, and the other one didn't, and it was a bard who had the same AC as me, because it never attacked the bard. And I had already shown it, I had a shield spell, also it had to hit me like, more than five, I have to be able to do so. Which it did, every time, with attack rolls that could have hit anyone in the party, but actively chose to attack me, the squishy sorcerer who has lit done literally nothing the entire fight. Instead of the Howl and Barbarian who are, are right next to it and killing it, because you guys are AC is too high. That's what an intelligent creature does. It's a boss. It at least like is plus seven or something. I don't know. I was unconscious, but I could hit a 20 AC if it had been attacking them. I don't know guys, it was a rough last fight for me specifically, and to be honest, I didn't think, think it was that difficult of a fight. 
it just only hit me. It screams was going to be rough regardless of what happened, but the rest was a cakewalk. And I legitimately had fun the entire rest of the session, but I didn't get to play the game in that last encounter. At all. And that upsets me. I've had a similar situation in the past when I was on a on a different Red Smarch. I was playing a dragon board who was resistant to fire. We got pit against two dragons, one of which was fire. Fire. The first round of combat, the dragons fire breath the whole party. I took enough damage to one shot me, even with resistance. The dragons then proceeded to maul my corpse, before, or I even got to make a death save. Now, this isn't in that, but it's not far off. I didn't play under that DM anymore after the dragons incident, and I'm te and I'm te tempted to avoid this DM now too. Tempted? Just avoid it, 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 this person. Avoid them. They are not worth your time. And here's the first of the not safe for work stories that I'm that I more or less skimmed over to make sure they were. Okay, and they were. They're YouTube friendly at the very least. Demon friend, and for years, Earth destroys everything to make room for racism and anti fun. So, this happened a few months ago and is mostly resolved now on good terms with DM, but for the moment, we are no longer talking. Just wanted to hear everyone's takes on how to handle things like this in the future. I am almost 21. Back in my first year of high school, I met this friend. He was ADHD, like me, so we got along pretty well. We, may we maintained contact for a few years, then talked for a year he moved away, then started actively hanging out again about two years ago. That sounds like fun. I did not remain in contact with a lot of people that I met. And in my high school days, I mean, to be fair, a lot of them were only quote unquote friends because we both had an autism. Around the beginning of the year, I was invited to join his D&D campaign, a homebrew world based on video games, full of neat little references to obscure games with an actual homemade house screen song and great music. I am still amazed at how awesome the world he managed to think up was. But as the campaign progressed, some issues popped up. I mean, that does sound like a really interesting world that uh, I, I might, I'd, I'd sell the idea for, or when I make, when I try to homebrew my own world in D&D. That's not gonna happen for a long time though. <sighs> For context, this was technically my first campaign, as my real first was a bunch of first timers I didn't know the rules, floundering about with nobody really learning anything. Not even how to level up properly. I picked Warlock, and the rest of my party was a wizard, rogue, barbarian, bard, fighter, and paladin. As things went on, I started to notice that as a warlock that reserves their slots mainly for big plays or things outside combat, I never got the opportunity to use them. Every single NPC in every town we came across could sense magic. Not just see or hear the casting, but sense the presence of magic anywhere near them and who cast it no matter what. They could even see through the sky's self, and it's the fact that basically a freaking everywhere magic effect like any kind is outlawed. So anytime me or the wizard tried to cast a spell to manipulate someone for information, even if they're evil, we would get punished by the town. Not only that, but anytime I tried to use spell slots in battle for spells to control or hinder opponents, the DM would have the enemies find some way to instantly end the spell in one turn. So my spell slots were completely worthless for anything except misty steps and damage. Now, if we made it clear this is how the world worked, it would have been fine, but when we brought up that we were going to kick casters, he didn't mention it, even in passing. Things got worse when I started to realize how racist all the NPCs were towards non-human races. 
in practically every town, we will be treated like garbage by some of the citizens, but it got worse. Some entire villages were so racist that the non -im that the non-human PCs were referred to as pets for the hour or, or so we'd be there. We literally would not be allowed to talk or we would be persecuted. Not only that, but we had no way to get back at them either. I tried to charm the dragon dr the wagon driver into liking me and treating me with respect. Now you're not allowed to do that. I try to fight back against racist NPCs that tend to subjugate Dragonborns, of which I am one. Now nah, you guys can't do anything about him. This made the game incredibly unfun for both me and the wizard, as we were non-human full casters that couldn't do a single thing in 50% of towns and could only talk in the rest. The wizard is also great friends with the DM. So we bring this up to the DM, we tell him it's not fun to be spellcasters, we want our characters free with respect, and we want freedom to make choices. This campaign is an extension of myself. What fucking bullshit. I'm already it, it checked out. Changing it would be the same as changing who I am as a person. So you're racist and you hate casters. So you have no imagination and you who, who don't like any and you're incredibly racist. That's great. So sorry, but if you don't like it, don't be a part of it. This led to a big argument of a more personal nature that I will not repeat here, as it isn't important to this story. And that's where things left off. TLDR, DM and longtime friend makes world full of racism against PCs and allows next to no freedom of choice or spellcasting, leading to a friendship and a campaign falling apart. And there's a sequel to this. This is the one that was actually marked as not safe for work. I'm not sure if that one was. Any day now. <sighs> Sequel DMs other oh my goodness. I already did this. DM's other experiences revealed trigger warning, sexism, sexual abuse, incest. This was a post I made here quite a while ago detailing my falling out with my DM. They made a world which sounded fun on paper but was full of racism and did not allow spellcasters to do anything with their spells. Opting to end a years long friendship to keep the integrity of his game intact. Just such nonsense. Since then, things have been of, have fully switched between us. He and he ended the campaign fully, and due to his constant narcissistic behaviors, things ended on an incredibly bitter note. But after things split off, a bunch of things came up around his behavior in another friend's campaign that made a lot of things about his own campaign even worse. So the racism was bad enough, but would you believe me if I told you he's sexist too? In a campaign run by my friend, we were both players for the first time. He was playing as a woman, now this was just as we started having differences. So I backed out because I didn't feel comfortable. It turns out, I dodged a fucking bullet. As I mentioned before, this was his first time playing a female PC, and he might be preparing for some pretty bad stereotypes, but it was somehow worse than even I predicted. Non-stop. Every conversation he ever had with everyone was him playing his character as a horny prostitute. Even with other party members. This was bad enough. But then according to the group after I left, he said his other goal for the character was that she wants to be raped and murdered. And these were his actual words, not just an implication. Dude, you dodged a fucking bullet. And leaving this person probably is for the best. Needless to say, he was eventually rude because he made every single other player there uncomfortable. Some of them actually had, had experiences with sexual abuse, which made it worse. Especially considering he knew about it. 
yet still will continue to fly his female PC whose purpose was getting violently raped and subsequently executed by presumably the person who violated her. Wow, I did not censor or that word, but whatever. You already knew this was coming. Well, you knew that was sexual abuse. I did not I think it would go that far. This led to me finding out a bunch more things about him in everyday life. Like how every time he meets a woman, he, admits, he instantly views her as nothing but a potential sex object. Yeah, you're probably good to never talk to this person again. Expressing disappointment to his other friends if she turns out to be a lesbian. Never acknowledge them as a friend. Or that he has an IRL incest kink. Claiming that if he ever had a daughter and she wanted to have sex with him when she was of age, he would accept. Ugh. That's disgusting enough, but considering his mindset towards women in real life and the horrific art fantasies is he wants to play out in an RP involving IRL friends, I struggle to believe that he would ever think, think he requires her consent. TLDR, this DM turned turn out to be even worse than I mentioned before. Sexist, creepy, and all around and unpleasant to be around. With a real incest kink and a probably real non consensual kink. On that horrific story, I think it's time for me to end the video. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but I'm hoping it's not read stories about that again, or stuff like that. Either way, until then, goodbye!